conference for the announcement of the fight between undefeated WBC middleweight champion and son of the legend Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. who will be going up against two-time world division champion Sergio Martinez. The fight takes place Saturday, September 15th. It's in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it will be broadcast live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Good afternoon, Buenas tardes. We're pleased to be here in the Big Apple uh, to announce here once again uh, that on September 15th at the Thomas and Mac Arena in Las Vegas, uh, we will have uh, the fight of the year. This is a fight that has uh, been talked about for the last couple of years. Uh, finally, it's ready and it will happen. Wynn Resorts is our host casino. We had the uh, press conference in Las Vegas there yesterday. And according to the odds makers, this fight uh, is now being quoted as eight to five Martinez, which means it's better than a two to one fight. There hasn't been a major fight that I can remember in years that has had this close a line. That indicates from the professionals how competitive this fight is and how uh, we are all so pleased uh, that we will be finally presenting to the fight public a fight that fight fans deserve. The two best middleweights in the world going at it in Las Vegas on September 15th. Give the public what they deserve. The public deserves the best. This fight is the best. And um, you have a, a true you know, meeting of, of a clash of styles, a clash of histories. You know, a, a young champion with a famous name, already a superstar in Mexico, a superstar among the Mexican Americans, a superstar among a lot of the Latino community. Um, who grew up very wealthy because his dad was the most recognizable sportsman in all of Mexico, one of the greatest fighters who's ever lived. And, and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., you know, he had an easy route, like I wish I had, like there's nothing wrong with being raised rich. But the man over here didn't have such an easy time, you know, was raised in a, the poorest ghetto in Argentina, you know, shoeless, you know, his mother making his own clothes, um, having to live a life where he had to crawl out of the ghetto. And, and it took him many, many years into his 30s before anyone knew who he was in North America. And, and until his, into his 30s and mid 30s, till he became an HBO staple and developed a reputation as a pound for pound great. Um, this is a matchup that the boxing fans are waiting for, the people at Dais have been waiting for a long time. But it's a matchup that's going to capture the imagination of the public, and that's what we need to do in our sport. And now we have with us a very special person. One of the greatest fighters that ever lived, legendary, certainly the greatest fighter in the history of Mexico. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have him with us today. He's the father of the champion. He is celebrating today his 50th birthday. Please welcome the one, the only, the Hall of Famer, Julio Cesar Chavez. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Bueno, primeramente, dar las gracias a todos los que, a todos los que, a todos los presentes. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for being here. A todos los medios de comunicación para esta gran pelea. Pues, como lo he venido diciendo, no, definitivamente. Like I, I have been saying. Definitely. Creo que esta es la pelea que todos querían. This is the fight that everybody wanted. Eh, definitivamente sabemos que, que Julio va a una pelea difícil, a una pelea dura. I know that Julio is going to a difficult fight, a tough fight. Sabemos que Martínez está considerado como uno de los mejores peleadores de la actualidad. We know that Martinez is considered a one of the best fighters uh, now. A mí en lo personal no me gusta, se me hace un peleador 
apestoso, un peleador, un peleador correlón, un peleador eh, eh, que te baja las manos. Bueno, pero en fin, a él, le, a él le, 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 le ha servido. And personally, I don't like his style. He's a runner. He, he stinks. He, he only he put his hands down. But well, it works for it works for him. Y en lo particular, eh, creo que con todo respeto de todos ustedes, ha hablado mucho buche, mucha mierda. And, in, and personally, with all the respect for all of you, he has been talking only bullshit, only trash. Pero el 15 de septiembre, toda esa mierda que ha hablado se la va a tener que tragar. Gracias. But on the 15, all the bullshit that he has been talking, he needs, he's going to need to eat it. division means so much. In 1974, I promoted my first middleweight championship match. Uh, the great uh, Argentine middleweight champion, Carlos Manzón, against Jose Napolis in Paris. That led to a number of other Manzón fights with the great Colombian champion Rodrigo Valdez and Carlos Manzón. Uh, and then I promoted Vito Antofermo and Alan Minta and all the middleweights of that era uh, until uh, one day uh, in the late 70s I received uh, a letter, two letters actually, one from Tip O'Neill, who was Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, and the other from Senator Ted Kennedy, saying that if I didn't give marvelous Marvin Hagler a shot at the middleweight championship, uh, there would be a congressional hearing, which I wasn't about to go to. So <laughs> Marvin Hagler, a year later, became the middleweight champion of the world, and that led to some great, great middleweight championship matches with Tommy Hearns, with Roberto Duran, uh, and with Sugar Ray Leonard. It's been a great, great division. Later on, Roy Jones and James Toney, uh, Iran Barkley figuring in the mix, Michael Nunn. Great, great division. And so it's so unbelievable uh, that now, we're on the cusp of having a middleweight championship match that, believe me, will go into history. I really believe that when people years from now talk about great, great middleweight championship matches as we do of those that took place in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we'll be talking about this great match between Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Sergio Martinez. Really, this is historic. This is real history. And now, to introduce Sergio Martinez, my friend Lou DiBella. You know, a couple of years ago, we first started barking and yelling and doing all the stuff that got Senor Chavez so upset. Um, Honestly, back then we didn't think it was much of a fight. You know, uh, I wasn't worried about it. I, I saw a tall, skinny kid. Didn't look much like his father. Looked a little awkward in there. I didn't think he could go, he could go three or four rounds with Madavia. Um, my own camp knows this. Most of you in the press know this. I tend to get nervous before fights. I'm one of those guys that just get nervous. I get emotionally involved. I get nervous. I'm nervous. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because this is a real fight. I'm nervous because the bigger, stronger guy is sitting right here. I'm nervous because when they walk in the ring that night, he's going to weigh about 165 pounds, and he's going to be able to weigh about 180 pounds. And when a guy like mine does this, if you get hit by a guy weighing 180 pounds, it's a little scary. But I know what kind of champion is sitting to my left. And a couple of seconds ago, I we were honored to listen to one of the greatest fighters of all time. 
and on the left is one of the greatest fighters of our time. And on September 15th, you're going to see why Sergio Martinez is one of the greatest fighters of our time. Um, he's not only one of the greatest fighters of our time, but he's really one of the great people in boxing. And a lot of you know this, and it's one of the things that Sergio's been doing very actively the last couple of years is philanthropy and, and public service. And he, he's adopted two causes that are very close to his heart. One is the fight against domestic violence, the belief that a woman should not be abused under any circumstances by a male, that a ch child should not be hit by its father, that a woman should never be hit by the man in her life, and that that is unacceptable behavior. He's gone to safe houses all over the world. He's gone to women's shelters all over the world, most of the time not accompanied by press, not accompanied by anybody, but to encourage those women. Um, having grown up poor and having to deal with bullying as, uh, himself as a child, he's been very active in anti-bullying causes. And um, actually, uh, there's a young lady here I'd like to bring up. Monique, can you come up here for a second? For those of you who aren't familiar, this is Monique McLean, and Monique has been a very close friend of Sergio's uh, for the last few years. And uh, Monique was victimized by bullying, couldn't go to school. Uh, she was so abused. Um, this kid was in the dumps and, and wasn't able to pursue her life or her education. And, and you know, we were asked, Sergio was asked to take a meeting with her in, in Connecticut, but it so moved him that they've developed a very close relationship. And, I'm proud to say that Monique just graduated from middle school. She's back in school with everybody else living her life. So there are bigger things to fight for sometimes than just a belt. And by the way, on September 15th, we're not just fighting for a belt. The belt's sitting over there, but the best middleweight in the world is sitting over here. And both of these guys have something to prove. He wants his belt back, and he wants his respect. And that's why this is going to be such a great, great fight. Yeah. First, uh, I want to thank uh, one more time to, to HBO Pay Per View, to Top Rank, um, and Global, and Divella Entertainment, and my promoter, Ludi Vela, and Samson Lukovic, and my trainer, Pablo Sarmiento, and all my team, all my friends. Um, and now, uh, I want to dedicate this, this fight to, to Marie McLean. She's, a, she's a, a, a good friend. She's a great friend. Um, okay, I, I now I speak Spanish, okay? Translate Samson. But, but translate, okay? Eh, Samson, diga... Bueno, primero quiero dar las gracias eh, a, a la Top Rank y a Chávez Jr. por haberme dado esta, este combate. I want to say thank you to Top Rank and Jr. to accept this uh, fight. Por fin, por haberme dado este combate y dejar de escapar como gallina, macho. Finally, he said yes and not to run like a chicken. Era hora que las gallinas salgan de gallinero, ¿no? It's time for the chicken to go out of this place. Yo sé que todos lo piensan, pero yo me animo a decirlo. Everybody think, but I have the, the, the way to say it. Bueno, el 15 de septiembre le voy a pegar hasta en el carnet de identidad y le voy a dar la paliza de su vida a Charles Jr. A ver. I want to really fight, I will, pay, I, I will beat up his ID card and, and really beat him up. No, no le va a ayudar, ni siquiera el bate de Wilbur con el que entrena. Uh, nobody will help him, including who is training for him. Ok, esperen de mí la mejor producción, la mejor pelea del 15 de septiembre próximo. Wait for me for the best fight I ever did. Uh, ahora quiero dedicar eh, esta velada, este combate I want to dedicate this uh, fight a también a toda la gente que lucha por, por combatir el problema de bullying y el problema de violencia doméstica de violencia de género to all the, the people that are fighting against the bullying and against the abuse against women y quiero dedicar este combate también a todas las mujeres agredidas y golpeadas y a todos los niños agredidos y golpeados en los colegios I want to dedicate this fight to all the women that is getting hurt and the children that are getting hurt. Muy bien. Otra vez darle felicitar a Chávez, padre. One more time, I want to say thank you to Senior. Y por otra vez, por soplar las velas delante nuestro. Muchas and gracias. And one more time to blow again the candles. Uh, many, many months ago, uh, I said in the radio station before the fight was made that Sergio Martinez was a clown. And uh, today, 
I would like just to confirm that and tell him that eres un cabrón payaso, la verdad. A mí me la pela este también. He's not the only clown. We have two. Tenemos a dos payasos. Y bueno, antes de antes de seguir, before I continue, I would like to tell you something. Well, I was going to have the last laugh. I would like to tell you that uh, Julio Cesar Chavez has, has been made a name by his own. He is a fighter that uh, has scaled a lot in his career. I think he's, uh, he's becoming one of the best fighters in the world. And he's got the opportunity to prove it on September 15. Finally, with this clown, he's, gonna, he's going to, to prove that he's the best, the best middleweight in the world. And uh, I, it's a real pleasure, a real, real pleasure to introduce the son of the legend and the legend himself, Julio Cesar Chavez Carrasco. Hola, primero que nada, gracias a todos por venir. Well, first of all, uh, thank you everybody for being here. Estoy muy emocionado y muy contento por esta gran oportunidad, esta gran pelea. I'm very excited, very happy for this great opportunity, for this great fight. Eh, gracias a todo el equipo de Sergio también por darme la oportunidad. Also, I would like to thank uh, the team Martinez for giving me this opportunity. Creo que esta es una gran pelea, una pelea me, que toda la gente ha estado pidiendo. Well, I think this is a great fight. This is a fight that everybody has been asking for. Esta es la pelea que yo quiero porque quiero demostrarle a Sergio y quiero demostrarle al mundo que soy el mejor campeón de peso medio del mundo. This is the fight that I want because I want to prove to Martinez and I want to prove to all the world that I'm the best middleweight in the world. Mm, yo creo que <laughs> Martinez ha estado entrenando, eh, ha estado bailando para para entrenar para la pelea porque es de la única forma así que que puede ganarme. Well, I think that Martinez has been dancing, and that's the type of training that he's gonna make, that he's gonna do for the fight because that's the only way that he can beat me dancing. Creo que ya encontró su su verdadera profesión como bailarín. I think that uh, he found his real profession as a bailarina. Con eso, con eso me alcanza y sobra, Junior. No creo. Con eso me alcanza y sobra, Junior. That is good enough for me. Bueno, eh, la verdad que siempre he sido una buena persona y me da gusto que haya encontrado su verdadera profesión porque después del 15 de septiembre tiene que ver bien qué es lo que va a hacer porque el día 15 de septiembre le voy a demostrar arriba del ring quién es el mejor campeón de peso medio del mundo. I have been always a good person and uh, I wish him the best and uh, I am very happy that he found his real profession as a bailarina because uh, after the 15 uh, he's gonna need to find something to do. Gracias a todos por venir y el día 15 de, de, de septiembre les prometo una gran pelea y voy a ganar. Gracias a todos. Thank you everybody for coming and on sí, September 15 I promise you I will beat Martinez and I will promise you uh, you will have a great fight. Llévate una foto Junior el 15 de septiembre. No te olvides la foto. Si no, no te van a reconocer nadie. ¿vale? Don't forget to take a dark picture because no, nobody will recognize you after the cartera, September 15. Be sure that you take pictures. Padre, también puedes subir los rincones para que ya no esté ahí. Maybe the father will come to the corner like this and start to, to, to father, you know, to defend so much his son. Maybe we should go together. Uh, you, you always you 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 instead to watch the fight you go to the corner you go back you you like like you are the trainer but you're nothing. I'm quiet, please. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Hey, Bob, 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 excuse me, Bob, hey, to the left. Hey, do you remember? Don't cry for me, Argentina. Do you remember? Don't cry 
for me, Argentina. Yes, I, si I, I, sang, I sang that. Yeah. He remembered. I, before he fought Pavlik. I want this song. I sang, I want this song Don't cry for me, That's Argentina. Fine. I want this song for the No, I learned my lesson. I'm not singing it no. again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you all for coming. The fighters are going to go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we don't want you to look past any opponents, you know, especially the challenge, but what do you have plans? What are your plans after this fight? ¿Qué son tus planes después de esta pelea si, si todo va bien con Chávez? Uh, mira, te iba a responder lo mismo que el otro día. Mis días se terminan el 15 de septiembre. El día 16 reciente podré contestar eso. I can't answer that question until the 16th. Why? Why? Because, because I think I'm ready now, you know? Uh, I don't have an amateur fight and when he win the title, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not ready for, for this fight, you know? And the fight is is now is more hot than ever. You know the people expect uh, to see this fight. And I think it's the, it's the right moment for for make the fight. With us on the Crystal Heart Show is the one and only Doc Stanley, and we have another great fight coming up September 15th. We have Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. against uh, Sergio Martinez. And do you have a prediction here? Yeah, I like this fight. First of all, just always uh, all praise the Father God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And always great to be on the number one female and the prettiest sports report in New York City, Crystal Heart. It, it's an amazing fight. You know, this is a fight that... Um, uh, it looked like it wasn't going to happen or was delayed, but in talking to Aram and to Bella earlier, you know, Chavez Jr. wasn't ready. Now the feeling is that he's ready, he's matured, he's had the fights underneath his belt to find Martinez. Ironically enough, Martinez was stripped of his title for not fighting the mandatory. Chavez fought the guy that Martinez was stripped for, so he has Martinez's old belt. Um, it's an interesting fight, you know, because... Um, Chavez will be so much bigger than Martinez when they finally fight. I mean, they're going to weigh in at 160, but by the time they fight, you're going to have a light heavyweight fighting the middleweight. I like Martinez because of um, his ability. I just, I just think he's simply better. Would not be surprised to see uh, Chavez pull it out because Martinez cannot do the little things that he does in the past fights, putting his hands down, sticking his chin out. If that happens, he could get his head taken off. Uh, in the whole history of this game, there's only three guys that were unbeatable. The first Ali, Durant at 135, Ray Robinson at welterweight. But my prediction is I like Sergio Martinez. I think he's just simply better. And I think he, as Lou DiBella said, a term I hate to use, but he, he's the more determined, maybe the more hungrier fighter. I think um, the popularity of, of Chavez has ascended. Chavez has had an easier road to success, which means nothing. Talent-wise, I like Sergio Martinez. Okay, and, yeah. and, and what about that age factor? Well, you know, Lou DiBella said that that's the thing that, that bothers him, is that Chavez is so much younger. He is a young lion. Young, young lion, and he's so much bigger and stronger. But talent wins out, you know what I mean? And I think talent-wise that Sergio um, is the better talent between the two. Even if you look at Chavez now, you look at him, and there's, there's, there's a look of youth, but also there's, there's, there's a look of, of that he's truly not matured enough, he's truly not seasoned enough, I think he's just not good enough. Uh, wouldn't be surprised, but for my money, I'm gonna go with Sergio DeMarta. As long as he fights the kind of fight he should fight, I like Sergio in this fight. With us from Black Star News, Destinio Baby Lewis, did I get that quite right? Destinio Baby Lewis Jr. <laughs> yes, I can't forget the junior. Oh, you can't forget the junior, just like this fight. We have uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And, and, and uh, Sergio Martinez, yeah. The junior, of course, he's the son of a legend and uh, he's trying to keep up with his father's uh, legendary career. And he's trying to forge ahead, try, perhaps trying to get out of the shadow from his father and forge his own career. And I think he's doing it in the wrong way, in the right way, right, I'm sorry. Because he, Martinez was angry. He called him a coward. He was hiding, hiding under the bed with his father the whole nine yards. But I think that the Chavez Camp Jr. knew exactly what they were doing, a perfect strategy. He won the world title from Civic. And uh, he, then he fought guys uh, like uh, Peter Manfredo and Rubio and down Andy Lee, an ex-Olympian, to hone up his skills and get sharp. And of course, under the tutelage of Freddie Rose, a great trainer, he, he improved himself. And I saw him when he fought Andy Lee. I said, wow, this is not the Julio Cesar Chavez that I've seen a few years ago. So now, psychologically, I feel that he's ready for a monster like Sergio Martinez 
who owns the 160 pound title, who owns uh, all over the world, every middleweight that he's fought, he's knocked out. So now this is the test, the asset test. And uh, is, is it going to be a great fight? Of course it's going to be a great fight. Uh, does anybody have an edge? I don't think so. But in looking at Julio Cesar Chavez, who's a vicious, punishing body puncher, and I've never seen Martinez get hit that way, I would say off the top of my head, and they think I'm crazy, that Chavez has the edge because of his vicious body punching. He believes in the philosophy of you kill the body and the head dies, and that's what he does. If you've seen him, he just aims at your body and ties you out. Ask Andy Lee, the body beating that he took. Yeah. What we have here, we have Sergio Martinez. It's a story of a man that came from Argentina, has really worked his way up, was very poor. Uh, they, they were saying that Chavez Jr. sort of maybe walked a little bit of a more comfortable life since his father was a legend. So, so that's yeah. one of the storylines. Of course, one is much younger. We, we have youth against, against somebody who, a veteran. Uh, a, a veteran, and we'll see about him keeping his arms down. I did hear that, you know. I mean, Sergio Martinez does fight with his arms down. You never know when he's going to get caught exactly. one day. So, so it should be an interesting fight. And, and your prediction now, you know, you yeah, think? Well, well, you know, Sergio with his ballet dancing and his trickery. <laughs> you know, remember what he did to Paul Williams and he's done to everybody else. He tricks you. He sucks you into these traps. And a uh, uh, prediction, well, you know, I know Sergio is going to come in with all his armament and the way he's done things, but I see an improved Julio Cesar Chavez that may give him a hard way to go. And I have to lean right now, the top of my head, I have to lean towards Chavez winning because of the body punching. And he's a hard puncher too. He's a never... Say die, uh, he's a finisher. He will pound you and pound you until the referee says you're finished. But then again, everybody's still going for Sergio because Sergio is the monster today. <laughs> Sergio <laughs> is a monster. Pretty and once again, appreciate. Black Star News. Yes, Black Star News, the senior lawyer's junior editor and writer, the senior lawyer's. So don't forget, September 15th, 2012, A, this is going to be perhaps the fight of the year. You're here, you heard it here on the Crystal Heart Show.